I have been a listener of the podcast, I think, since I was in like fifth grade. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> no, you make me feel old. I'm so serious. I'm a senior in high school now. I've been listening ever since Kurt was, um, he was on like with Lindsay, like they were a duo on the show every week. And I mean, I just have never really, um, I, I'm in the Facebook group and I'm kind of, feel very young to be using Facebook, but um, yeah, I've been a fan of literally every single person in here for so long. I, I know all of you. It's like I'm meeting my like favorite celebrities or something. Oh, well, that You're was gotta be the cutest thing I've ever been. So you might want to calm this down. Every single we feel old. All of us now need to switch to different monitors because we all have huge heads. I, I just I, I can't even see everybody on it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Bree. I am still laughing and telling that story <laughs> when we recorded this episode 500. That has got to be the cutest, sweetest thing I've ever heard through 500 episodes of this podcast. Thank you for being a listener since the fifth grade. It's okay. You can use Facebook. <laughs> Hey, Disney World geeks, Curtis Stone here. I am the pod father host of this crazy geeking family. Welcome to episode 500 of the Geekin' on Walt Disney World podcast. <laughs> this week, I review my top memories of the podcast. How I got started with this, over 20 of my super geeks joined me to ask me questions and share their memories and lots of thank yous for the podcast. I've been talking and hanging out with friends like you reviewing trips to Disney World for close to nine years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I did start the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips, and then we brought on these amazing Disney geeks to tell their trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports, except for this week. I have to apologize. You might not get a lot of trip ideas for your next trip from this episode, but we do encourage a family atmosphere here on the podcast, and we'd love for you two to join our geek and family. You know, there's like 999 of us. There's room for one more. Always. We have an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WW Family. It's a great place to ask questions, share your trip pictures, and have fun with one of the best group of Disney World geeks out there on the internet. Come on, join some weird internet friends. <laughs> We're independent Disney authorized travel guides with FTC Elite Travel, and we'd love to be your travel guides. Help you book your room, tickets, and dining reservations. If you didn't get your questions answered this week, you can always get a hold of my wife, Margita. We call her mama. Her good friend, Auntie Judy, they are the traveling tiaras. And you can email them, get started on your next trip to Disney World or cruise or going out to Disneyland, Universal Studios. Email them at travelintierras at gmail.com. Just check the show notes on that podcast app you're listening to the show. You'll find their email as well as mine if you'd like to reach out to us and book a trip or talk to me on the podcast doing a trip report. We'd love to talk to you and we're always here for you guys. Well, this week is a round table with over 20 of my super geeks celebrating 500 episodes. I apologize up front if you are looking forward to another trip report. Lots of food talk and some of our super geek tips and tricks for Disney World. As my friend Joe Taylor often says, please grant me some grace this week as we self-indulge a little celebrating 500 episodes of the podcast. Well, you heard the intro. <laughs> That's how the show starts off with a Surprise, somebody who steals the show in our hearts. I talk about why I started the podcast and I start answering some of my super geeks questions like, how long does it take to produce the podcast? I share with them an audio recording Glenn Kessler did for me reviewing the last 500 episodes. 
You'll hear me talk about first time meetups with geeks. Dave Youngward from the Disney Crush podcast asked a really interesting question. Who who was inspired to start podcasts from Geekin? Some of my first G3 memories. I know Andy Hoffman asked me to come up with some of my top 10 favorite moments. I think I came up with like 15 or so. I talk about the extra pair of underwear story, the listener who borrowed my swim trunk story, my favorite stories throughout the podcast. Breeze, sweet thank you to us. Some of the amazing meetup stories that were not awkward. (laughs) And a lot of thank yous. And there's kind of an abrupt ending to the show this week. Yeah, every podcaster starts out hoping they can build an audience where people will listen, be entertained, learn together, and be engaged in what you're doing. I intentionally started this podcast about nine years ago to build a community, but I had no idea I would discover and grow a Geekin' on Walt Disney World family. So you can say that because I love that. <laughs> can you say that again? Lie. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have been a listener of the podcast, I think, since I was in like fifth grade. Oh dear I, Lord. <laughs> no, you make but, me feel old. <laughs> I'm so serious. I'm a senior in high school now. I've been listening ever since Kurt was um he was on like with Lindsay, like they were a duo on the show every week. And I mean, I just have never really, um, I, I'm in the Facebook group and I'm kind of feel very young to be using Facebook, but, um, yeah, I've been a fan of literally every single person in here for so long. I, I know all of you. It's like, I'm meeting my like favorite celebrities or something. Oh, well, that You're was gotta be the cutest thing I've ever been. So you might want to calm this down. Every single feel old. All of us now need to switch to different monitors because we all have huge heads. I, I just I, I can't even see everybody on it. Yours is so yours is so big I can see the glow off your head. Well, you can always see that. So we, when I talked to Curtis on the phone about a year and a half ago, uh, he will tell you I was literally crying. Like I was crying that Curtis was on the phone with me. And then when I was on Zoom, and then Wendy asked if I wanted to meet her for coffee nearby. I also started crying. <laughs> so, like, I, I understand oh, how you're feeling. Gosh. Bree, that's got to be this. I've been doing this for 500 episodes. It's like the sweetest thing I ever heard. <laughs> I didn't cry when I met you, if it makes you feel better. I know. <laughs> you didn't? Maybe no. maybe when I met Judy, but not yeah. unimpressed. You. you were totally unimpressed. <laughs> Bree, Bree, where do you live? Um, I'm from just outside of Atlanta, um, and yeah, I'm 17 years old, so I feel um, not to make uh, you guys feel old or anything. I'll, I'll make sure oh all these guys have the best well behavior. Old. That's like, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's too late. You've already done it. Bree, you're the same yeah. age as my yeah. granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the nicest way, in the nicest way possible. Yeah, she's the next generation. They'll be calling the gr- pa grandfather by then. <laughs> hey, are you when, are you going to college and are you going to do the college program? And you're not watching. I TV. I've actually thought about it. Um, I definitely think that it would be something I would love. I mean, oh, I you love need to t- you need to talk yeah. to Lindsay then. Mm-hmm. She'll give you I all the definitely dish. do. She I must have heard be, it all. I would be even more starstruck if I meet her. No offense, Kurt, but <laughs> I love her. Uh, I'm, don't worry, I'm used to it. <laughs> this might be the best five minutes of your podcast ever. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I thought this episode was going to suck, to be honest with you, up until, until that. Are you, re- are you recording already? I had to turn that. I had to get that captured. At least I didn't get the first part of it, but that was fantastic. Oh my gosh! Well, how are we going to do this? Does anyone know? You talk. You said you had a plan. I, I thought well, Andy had a plan. It's not it's not Andy's in charge, isn't he? Did Andy have a plan? Andy, hey, dude, I'm going to pull it. I'm going to start my plan right now, and we're going to go as we flow. So, Kurt, <laughs> you're coming up on. Hi, Dave and Veronica. Are you hosting this, Andy? I'm 
going to be the unofficial host. All right. This is going to be your least popular episode of all time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> worst ratings ever. We put it. I got to get ready for that one star review coming out. Go to a different Zoom room because he's like sleeping on the couch. (laughs) Hey, at least Andy's not out walking in the snow. Hey, Veronica Uh, and Dave. I can't tonight. I went to me either. I wanted to be in person for this. (laughs) Okay, so what's the plan? We heard you had a plan. Let's hear it. There's a plan? My plan plan is we're just going to ask. I think we should, if you have a question, I'd say virtually raise your hand, but I can't see everybody. But I say, I know I have a couple questions in my head. And I know others have a few questions in their heads. So I think if somebody else wants to start, that's that's great. But I think we should use just kind of essentially do a virtual roundtable and go around and ask uh, uh, the pod father their, uh, their questions. Do you mean like what your favorite episode like what your favorite yeah, I was thinking, like you know experience fa- you know, fa- you know favorite episodes you know favorite you know particular moment um noreen has a question and they used to at this already yeah we can we'll let you know who raises Karen, their hand pulling this out of you, my, you my can also watch. there's also a feature on zoom if you click reactions and you can click raise hand i don't know if that just notifies kurt but yeah you can do that see i'm too old for this Andy, we'll we'll just tell you who raises their hands. <laughs> As a school teacher, Noreen, you go first. You raised your hand. So 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 my question is, what made you start this podcast? It's a lot of work. What uh, made you start it? I, you know, that's perfect, Noreen. I kind of wanted to tell my story. Not everyone like Bree has been listening since the first episode, probably. So <laughs> Bree and Daniel. I don't know if I, Daniel knows my story because he's listened to every episode. So here's my story from Disney World. Really, I never went as a kid. Margie and I never went as kids. I went in 1999. I was so excited because I switched jobs and I was sitting in a meeting that the guy, the, the manager said, hey, we got this ticket for Lotus Sphere and it's down in Disney World. Does anyone want to go? I'd only been working there a month. I was like, yeah, I want to go. I want to go. So I went down in 1999 to Lotusphere, which was about 10,000 people. I'd never been to Florida. I'd never been to a technical conference, which I was really excited about. I I went, I stayed, I couldn't get at the Dolphin and Swan where the, where the conference was uh, going on. It was so loaded at that time with conference goers. I went down to what is now the B which used to be, I always forget the name of that. What was, what was that resort called when it was all Gross pink? Wiener. No, Gross Wiener. Like, no. It was like Gross Wiener. No, like, no, it was Wee something Wee else. Sorry, yeah. but anyways, whatever. So I was in downtown Disney. I was blown away right away from just the immensity of that area with all the hotels. That kind of floored me. And then the, the, the dolphin and the swan was just amazing. The conference was fantastic. I went to... Hollywood Studios. I knew Margita right away. I was like, my kids were young at the time. I was like, oh, she's going to love this. Oh my gosh. She's gonna, she's always as a kid wanted to go to Disney World. And I went to Hollywood Studios for an afternoon. But I also got involved in a, a group of people that were bloggers. This is way before Facebook and, and Twitter and all this stuff when Brie was in fifth grade. I think. I don't, know, I don't even know if you were even born no, yet. I wasn't even born. Were you, oh my gosh. I wasn't even born. All right. So <laughs> blogging was the thing, and I really was social with a lot of the bloggers. And a lot of the bloggers were also speakers. They were a big deal at the conference. They were kind of the – talk about being starstruck. I was That was me going to the conference. I always sat in the front row. I got to know a few of them, but I was pretty intimidated by them. But definitely a culture and a community, and I watched a couple of guys who – really ran that community and took notice. They also had a podcast. A couple of the guys had a podcast and I really looked up to them, got a lot of technical information from them. About my third time going there, I would go and I would just be by myself, kind of intimidated by them or just talking to anybody. I'm kind of an introvert. I am an introvert. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I am. (laughs) You're laughing at me, but... (laughs) I just I just loved what 
the way those people interact with each other. I can remember Margie and I staying at the beach club about my third time. And I was I was so nervous. But the, on a Saturday before the conference started, they were getting together over on the boardwalk. And why do I always forget the name of that bar? What's the what's the one river, there? The river one? The ESPN. Yeah, the, ESPN? No, the river. Bar. We big did end up Big River Grill. Big River yeah. Grill, yes. <laughs> they had a big meetup out there. I was more amazed by their personalities and and so welcoming and took me right in. I wasn't one of them. I wasn't one of the speakers, but made a lot of friends. And then over the years, again, watching that culture and always said, you know, a podcast. I was into technology. I think back then, too, podcasting was hard. First of all, you had to have some technical ability. But between the community that was being built and and that little spark in my ear about podcasting, when I started to think about what I was going to do at home here, Margita and Lindsay and I, we always talked about Disney World. So I said, you know what? I, th- I, th- I learned and studied for about two years. And then it was around Christmas time. Lindsay always asked me, what do you want for Christmas, dad? And I said, you know what? I want to get a couple of microphones and I knew what equipment I wanted to get. I got the mixer. I used my iPad to record into at that time with the camera kit. And we sat on the dining room. Well, it wasn't right away. It wasn't until I remember like about February. She goes, we ever going to start that podcast, dad? I was like, yeah, we got, we, let's, let's do it. You know, it's a little nerve wracking to get on the microphone and just start talking it was, I can remember the first episode, oh, man, I was, I don't know, nervous is the right word, but I didn't, like Daniel was today, I was just a little bit <laughs> tongue struck, I think, when it first started. If you listen to that first episode, about, 10, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes, until Lindsay starts in, and then when the conversation started in, like, I've listened back to that first one, a lot of people are embarrassed with their first episode, I was like, it clicked, like, right away with her and I, I felt, you guys could judge that for yourself but and i just want to tell one other little story early on this is one of my talk uh he asked me to tell some of my favorite stories but i was at a work meeting about four months into the podcast and this guy's name was steve he sat about three desks down from me i knew him but didn't know him that well he says we're in a meeting hey kirk can you hang on a little bit till you know after the meeting i said sure steve what's up he says I don't know if you know this, but I, I like to run marathons and I like, and I like Disney world. <laughs> oh, you do. And he says, yeah. And you know, I, I like to try out different resorts. So I was scanning iTunes for a podcast. Cause I like to listen to podcasts when I, when I run my big runs training. And I said, Oh, is that right? <laughs> so I'm kind of getting an idea where this is going. He says, I'm listening to this episode. Cause I wanted to hear about the resort that was in the title. And he goes, I, he goes, I kind of, I recognize that voice. Where do I know that voice from? And he hadn't even looked at who the host was, not knowing it was someone who sits three cubicles down from him. And uh, he says, oh my gosh, you guys are fantastic. I really enjoyed your podcast. And your daughter, how old is your daughter? I said, well, I don't think at the time she was like 20 years old. She is amazing. <laughs> it's like, he kept going around and on. She's so smart. She's so mature. And I, I said, yeah. And that was kind of the fun part of it. I, I appreciate Bree saying that because I missed that too. It was a, it was a great opportunity. You know, you don't even, when your kids are off doing school and you're doing work and stuff, you don't really have good conversations with them, I suppose. And I, I was blown away by Lindsay all the time, the, her knowledge and what she knew and how smart she was. So that was a fun bonding moment. But that was a long answer, Noreen, but I wanted to tell the origin story. So thanks for asking it. So what was the date of the first podcast? April 2nd. So it'll be nine years. April 2nd was the release um, of that first episode. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Laptop. <laughs> what? I have a question. Yeah. Cousin Heather. 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 Cousin Heather. How long does it actually take you to produce each episode? Because it's not just recording, right? Right. Yeah. How I much think, time do you really put into it? So I'm kind of fortunate that I got into a formula of trip reports. Uh, I remember getting interviewed by this professor. He was doing, uh, he was doing some kind of f- survey or something it's out there. You could listen to that interview. He did. A, it was a really fun interview. 
podcasters have a hard time coming up with content. I, I got really fortunate that, you know, after Lindsay was kind of like fading out, doing pod fading on me l- later in that year, I had to come up with a way to keep it going. And I enjoyed the interview format of building community. I always wanted to build community, like I was saying. And and so I got lucky with the format in trip reports and build, bringing you guys on to do and well, I'll get into more how amazing that was with all the people I brought in and was so lucky with. But yeah, you know, the, the people will tell you if your show is, it usually takes four times the length of your show. And I think that's a pretty good estimate. And as you guys know, if Glenn Kessler comes on, it's going to be a two hour show. So <laughs> multiply that, you know, it's, it's definitely between four and 10 hours of work. So, you know, I'm up early, early in the morning. I got into a real good habit of editing every single morning. I'm usually editing the podcasts all uh-huh. week, every morning before I get out of work. And then in, in the evenings I'm doing, I've been doing a lot at night. I'm doing some Patreon episodes now. I'm doing the other podcasts now. And of course, recording for this, for Geek and So yeah, it's definitely an eight to 10 hour extra time. Wow. Not counting all the other shenanigans that go on. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the editing part I really hate actually. <laughs> Be honest with you. It's hard. It's hard. I like listening to it. On Monday I usually listen to the show just to see if I got it right. See if there's any mistakes. All righty. Kurt, what is your favorite moment? If you had to pick one, maybe a top three, maybe a top five top moments from the podcast. Well, I got like 15 of them. I wrote down. Well, let's hear all 15. <laughs> you really want me to tell you all of them? Well, I wanted to Wait, tell you. You need to, you need to play the drum roll and then start from 15 and go up. You know how you <laughs> like those. Yeah. Go back downs or count up. So, <laughs> Oh, I, I didn't really put them in a lot of, or I'll, I'll try to pick. Okay. And, you know, by the way, Glenn sent me in a recording I want to play for you guys. Would you like to do that early right now? Sure. Yes. I want you guys to hear this. He sent this at midnight last night. Glenn and I talked yesterday for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, too, by the way. So we had a good chat, just to let you know. Glenn is doing okay under circumstances. Mm. Let me know if you can hear this. Hey, Kurt. It's Glenn Kessler. Happy 500th episode, buddy. Well, we sure have created some incredible memories and maybe even some podcast gold over the past almost nine years together. How about this greatest hits trip down memory lane? Let me start with your utter inability to sell me on DVC way back in episode four. But of course, there's the five-year-old father-son trip reports that, dude, I will forever cherish that they exist and I can go back to them whenever I want. My sad little tent story, of course, that Kevin Curtis Allen still ribs me about from the first one. (laughs) Fast forward a little bit to you and me on our long walks and talks together through Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Disney Springs. Really cherish those times. There was It's 11 a.m. somewhere combo of two of your favorites, drinking margaritas and, of course, Jimmy Buffett. I was the first geek in the parks to sport a geekin' on WDW t-shirt, and believe it or not, I still have that in Generation 1. I was thrilled to be able to help get your Patreon hitting on all cylinders, and to have encouraged the Traveling Tierra's tip segment. I really love the content on both of those. Oh, there was that portrait of your dogs, a wonderful gift from the geeks that I was able to help craft. How about I love you? I know. There was the void. Oh, rest in peace. Oh my gosh, Rodell's tour around the Festival of the Arts. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> iconic event. And I think we jumped the line on meeting Belle. Meeting our favorite Broadway star that evening. I'm still not sure how that all happened. And of course, closing that night, sneaking into Old Key West after hours. There was that domestic dispute, however, in your Old Key West ghetto room. But on our next trip, (laughs) snuggling under the covers at Classy Riviera with you, me, and Andy Hoffman. That's not a pillow. 
<laughs> Closing out G3 at the Light Pig and City Works. There was the Rise of the Resistance tips. Boy, I'm so thrilled how many people's trips we were able to enhance with that. And the Toy Story Mania tips. The Kessler Run. And most recently, our drunken Uber FaceTimes to you. In bed, sorry. <laughs> There's also been some legendary stories that I've been lucky enough to be a part of that have become kind of podcast lore. Standing on couches at the Top of the World Lounge to pretty much start off that first G3, there was floor charcuterie when many of us transcended our Disney friendships and became real world friends. And who can forget Yeehaw Bob? Sorry, Chris. And the magic for me has stretched even beyond the parks. Kurt, I've had the Madiris and the Castros over to my house in Maryland. I've met up with friends from the podcast outside of Disney and non-Disney venues in Maryland and New York. All in all, man, some of my most cherished memories from the last nine years of my life have come as a direct result of this podcast you started. There are simply no words I could muster that would do justice to what that means to me. I can only hope, Kurt, that you can sleep well at night, knowing how many lives you've changed forever. Thank you so much for these 500 episodes, and I really cannot wait for the next five. Hey, Kurt, it's Glenn Kessler. Happy 500th episode, buddy. That was awesome. Going again. Well, I think we're done here for the night. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Glenn just summed it all up. We can all go to bed now. (laughs) It's over. That's it. All done. He did it again. Show's over. Drop the mic. Yep. He did it again. I listened to that about five o'clock this morning. Yeah, that was great. Where's Tony Ann? She crying? (laughs) (laughs) Where's she? Tony Ann, what do you think of Glenn Kessler? Kurt's playing your message. I he, think you're replacing me. Everyone's crying. He's all right. He's all right. He's okay. Hey, hey Kurt. He's okay. Yeah. So we're going to change questions real quick. Because I'm going to ask you one question, and then we're going to train Owen. Who's your favorite geek? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I also would like to add this that Oliver would like to petition since he wears uh, your t-shirt every day. <laughs> oh, so, Michael's here. So is Michael. <laughs> Actually, that's your favorite geek. Is Michael. Much, to, much to his uncle's chagrin, he wears his geek and shirt way more than he wears his Disney fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> that's good. Oh, uh, my gosh. You know, so, so Glenn and I had a really good uh-huh. conversation yesterday. Uh, whoop, here comes Madison. Hello, Madison's coming in. You know, I, I just want to say, you know, what Glenn was talking about, and we all know he's going through, you know, a tough family time right now for sure. And I want to thank Samantha and Rebecca, uh, Madison, who just joined, and Jen for an amazing idea. And you guys are, I didn't know what to do when I got the news on Monday about Glenn's dad. I've, I've, it's it's tough to hear that kind of news and you don't know what to say and thank you Samantha and you guys for the dinner idea that was so amazing so you guys you guys are amazing but you know I, just to carry on I, I can't believe when I started to reach out mm-hmm. to people I looked for bloggers I was all alone Lindsay left me all alone <laughs> And I, well, actually, Lindsay was still there when we reached out and we found Lisa Green, the first person we, we interviewed. And I looked at her. I remember after that interview, I went, oh, my gosh, that went really well, because I was waiting to find some really if I had a real bad interview and it really went bad. I was, I was you know, these were weird internet friends, right, Samantha? So I didn't know what to expect. But Glenn was telling me last night he started listening to episode four. He emailed me. And he wanted to know about DVC. My scam on him was, well, if you want to know about DVC, come on the show and I'll, I'll answer your questions. That was episode 12. How did I find Glenn Kessler in episode 12? I have no idea. Um, Judy Ludwig. Yes. I don't know if you guys know. We went to church for years. Judy sang at our wedding, Margie and I's wedding. 
We didn't know she was a Disney fan. I know. Until I started the podcast. But wait, I'm probably the only person who recorded with you in her bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) Judy, I didn't know you sing. Well, yeah. those were the days. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to remember that. <laughs> yeah, right. We need to recreate that. Uh-huh. Well, we all have to sacrifice Judy to get a good show, right? <laughs> Recorded. Oh. That, was, that was another thing, Lindsay. You know, people would come on with who who knows what back then and with whatever microphone, Lindsay was the one who said, you know, Dad. It's amazing how those iPhone little mics on the on the iPhone uh, earbuds work, and that saved us a lot of times with people back back yeah. in the day, back in the olden days. That worked really well. Heather Brainerd early early on. Does mm-hmm. anyone know who Kevin Curtis Allen is? <laughs> where is he? Oh, nobody never heard of. Yeah, him. where is he tonight? He's not here tonight. Yeah, he said he wasn't going to be here. He's leaving the island. Yeah, he's at some motocross thing, I think. He sent me a little video, too. You know, he used to take me on long walks (laughs) along the beach in the Isle of Wight back before before any of you guys, you know. And he was – those guys were people that early on, obviously, kept me going. People like Kevin reaching out to me from the exotic Isle of Wight. And we constantly were talking – you know, back now he doesn't care. Now, now we're just like brothers. <laughs> now we tease each other like brothers. So yeah, now he has his own podcast. So. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's right. But remember when we raised? Uh, going back to some of the early memories, we raised funds for Jody and her her daughter. Yes, her, and her son, Judy and Mom. We we raised some money. We raised like two hundred. It was over two hundred dollars. I know. Yeah, early on, and we. I always wanted to do something related because to she, she had a she had a really tough time there. Yep. A young single mother. Yeah. Yep. Her husband had died. Yeah. And we were talking with her and then we bought the Deputy Bot Boutique, I remember. I think she already had the trip booked and everything. We were trying to think of something we could do. And so she had that booked already. So we were able to uh, I think give her gift cards for that. So that was that was a pretty cool she lived not too like what half hour from my house so we drove down yeah in naugatuck actually past waterbury yeah. but yeah. yeah but that first g3 was oh. pretty yes <laughs> absolutely that one <laughs> sure <laughs> but what about the the very very first one you had kurt where yes. we met at the nomad lounge i did have that on my list judy yeah, yeah that was that the was first, the first little, the first meetup was dave small one. Dave and Veronica were there, there, right? Jeff Apoka. Dave and Jeff Apoka. Jeff Apoka yes. was there. Was that at Nomad or? At yeah. Nomad. Nomad Lounge. Nomad, yeah. Dave, who was with you? You had a bunch of people with you, didn't you? Probably, probably my kids, probably Olivia yeah. and Zay. They were coming at the time. Yeah. I think Dave has corrected me now. He had already started the, the Disney Crush podcast, and we were we spent a lot of time talking about podcasts. I had a lot of fun talking with Dave. That was that was pretty amazing. There was like twenty five people, I think, there yeah. at the yeah. Nomad Lounge. I was pretty, yeah, I was at least, yeah, impressed. I was that was really great. I mean, I was I was really excited. That was the first time where I was like, remember going back to my history. I wanted to build community, and I wanted to get something that was like my experience with the Lotusphere crew. And that was the first time I went, hmm, maybe there's something here. Yeah, and you were fashion fashionably late coming in too. We didn't well, know if you were going to make it. Yeah, I wonder why. Maybe I didn't know my way. I got lost. It, it was That's before you had Samantha showing you the way around. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I do want to say something about that, Kurt, though, about, about you know, Dave talking to you about podcasting. That's one thing that's special about you is that you you don't, you are willing to give a hand to those coming up behind you. There's no there's no feeling of competition or, you know, I don't know. I can't explain it, but you, you've always been willing to give your time and your advice. And um, I know to me and Dave, to Scott and Karen, I know Johnny J we all feel the same way that, you know, you're very gracious, Kevin and willing to help us and um, not not get any feelings of like territory not be territorial just be very welcoming and 
gracious and helpful for people that are starting out. So thank you. And Tanya. thank you for that. Thank you. That's actually what, what my question is, was um, about the, the pod father family tree. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious because I don't get to listen as much as to all the podcasts. You know, what are some of the podcasts that have started, I guess, that were listeners of your podcast? If you could talk mm. about some of those. Oh, man. I, you know, I've had people come to me and say they were inspired to podcast because of me. Probably Kevin. <laughs> I, but he won't admit it, but maybe he was one of them. Um, I don't know. Dave, Dave had already started. I don't. Dave was already on his own path. I don't think was, I inspired him. No, you did. I, 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 I listened to you because I was when I was doing research for my our podcast, Tony and our, our podcast. I listened to um, your coach. What was his name? That when you first started, Rick, oh, uh, uh, Cliff Ravenscraft. Cliff, yeah, Cliff. Yeah. Ra- I used to listen to his some of his seminars, and then he read a letter uh, from one of his pupils or his students, and it was from you. And that's how I found out about your podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. You probably told me that and I've forgotten. Yeah. So that's how I actually, and I started listening to your podcast, but I had been listening to other podcasts. I used to listen to the Disney exchange a lot too, but yeah, you were, you were an inspiration for me when we first started out for sure. I think, um, I think Lisa and Nick, I don't, I think they started after me too. So that they might be too also that, Lisa's going to yell at me if I'm wrong, but yeah, no, they weren't podcasting. Cause I was thinking, I was actually thinking of contacting Lisa and, and seeing if she would be, you know, part of it. Don't tell her that <laughs> there was, I mean, there's people that have come and gone, you know, thing about podcasting, you know, a lot of people they'll tell you, speaking of cliff, I, li- I did listen to a lot of, from cliff and a lot of my philosophy about podcasting that, that piece that, what uh tony ann just said they're really i mean people are gonna like or like you or not like you they're gonna listen to other podcasts anyway there's nothing there's nothing you can do about it you guys all get along without me all the time (laughs) you guys do you guys some of my favorite moments have been things that you guys have done together so but yeah i've i've had conversations over the years i couldn't a lot of them have all come and gone too. trey to be honest with you if you can get past seven or eight podcasts, you're doing something. So, yeah. Kurt, to follow up with what you just said, this community you've built is amazing. I think the friendships so many of us have formed. I know I wouldn't have imagined this. When you started this nine years ago, did you in your wildest, wildest of dreams ever picture this happening? No. I mean, so I was going to tell the story of the first G3, and one of the scenes that really – was amazing to me. I came in, this was the Sunday where we met Epcot to do the picture and I was coming in from the, the world showcase side of things. And I, I think we were trying to be there like a half hour before the picture was going to be taken. And I just remember this coming in and from all corners, if you know where we take the picture kind of where, where the ball is and there's the, you know, the way that comes in and there's the lake and stuff. I could see and reckon, don't, don't forget, I've interviewed every one of these people that are coming to the G3 pretty much. I mean, there, there wasn't anyone I didn't know because I'd had them on a Zoom call or something. And I could see their faces. I can see them hugging and this like, you know, there was like 60 people that were at least, no, there, I think there was more, almost 70 people that was at that first G3. That was a moment for me. And when they were all gathered and talking and having a good time, that was a magical moment. I was sitting there going, oh, I got to get someone to take the picture. I know Rich Brainerd took the picture. I was winging it as usual. I'm like, I think I'm in charge of this. Like I have to, or I have to like, <laughs> I didn't have all, it wasn't like the second G3 when uh, you guys were really leaders and taking charge of things. But no, I, I mean, I'm joking about that. And I can remember Kevin, of course, makes fun of me. But when I ever, you know, wanted to say something in front of this crowd and all that history of what you're thinking about that I wanted to build community and I looked in those faces and I tried to get the words out, I got so choked up. It was so embarrassing. But you guys, you know, 
it's emotional. It was really emotional. And then the second part of that, I'll, I'll say, you know, that whole first G3 was just early mornings, late at nights. Wendy, where's Wendy? Yes. Keeping me out late at night, you know, <laughs> after the boat fireworks. Let's go to the other fireworks over at, <laughs> I mean, that was the longest yes. day I ever did at Disney World from about 5 a.m. till 1 a.m., I think, that particular day. I, I was going strong. I remember Monday morning, we went into Magic Kingdom. There were some friendships made, you know, speaking of Claudia and AJ, for instance, and Judy was there, uh, Margita, and I'm trying to remember. We were all, I was getting some Starbucks and a big donut for the kids and a couple of donuts and stuff. I got a picture of my, my raising my hands just, and at some point that was all emotional. AJ was leaving. She was crying. The Claudia, they had such a great relationship that was born that, that weekend. And then I took a walk along the Magic King, along the castle. I was going just by myself. And I was telling this story to Glenn yesterday. I went, oh, my God. I was all alone. This was the Monday after the whole thing. I went, what the hell just happened? <laughs> it all kind of just floored me. I, I can't explain it. You've experienced it. You guys have experienced it. I can't, I can't explain it to you. Glenn and I were both struck for words yesterday how how we found these this amazing group of people it it blows my mind so those were some of the, those were really fun moments and you know in the podcast i was trying to think back the scene where uh i actually had it recorded a little bit but the underwear and the shorts recording <laughs> yeah. i was doing those that's when i was releasing some of the live recordings into the podcast so <laughs> I'm walking, I have my recorder, I have this little rolling recorder, and I'm walking, I get off the bus at Animal Kingdom, and I'm walking along, and I'm like, what the heck is in my, and you know, you're coming up to where the security is, everyone's starting to check in, and and they, they had the metal detectors too, and I'm like, what the heck is coming down, I'm trying to talk, and I, I go, I look down, I can see something coming out the bottom of my cargo shorts, I'm like, and I reach down and I pull it out thinking it's going to be a sock and it's a pair of underwear. <laughs> and I'm, I'm literally like 10 feet away from the, the guy doing the, the metal, metal detector. And the security guy says, so I've quickly, I take them and I stuff them in my pocket. And now my pocket's got my recorder, which I'm always worried they're going to steal from me anyway. And my cargo shorts are bulging out like crazy. And he's like, well, he says to the guy in front of me, you got something in your, in your pants, don't you? Shorts. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, he's going to make me to pull my underwear right out. And I don't know if they're clean or dirty. I don't know what the story is at this point. <laughs> and so <laughs> luckily he didn't. I don't, it was one, it was one of these ones where they were spot checking people. And he, I don't even know if I even went through the metal detector. I think I went scot-free. And then I, I meet up with Margita, and this is on that recording. It's like I, I had a, I probably had, it's like 171 or something. You'd have to go back into the, but Margita's reaction is hysterical. And when your I, daughter, and Lindsay was like, <laughs> she's digging for a plastic bag to put them in. Well, we're, like, get those things away like, from me. Margita goes, well, the first thing my, my Margita says, are they clean or dirty? And I went, I don't know. I haven't looked yet. <laughs> I said, how, how did they get in there? Because I think I'm wearing the same shorts I wore yesterday. But that was, that was one of the most hysterical. <laughs> that became legendary. And, of course, when Rob Madeira and I were walking during one the – was that the first G3? No. Yes. Was it? Yes, it was. When, when we were, oh, no. Was, do, it the, was the second? No, it was the first. No, it had to be the first. Cause, the first? Yeah, because yeah. he didn't make the second one. Yeah, right. He was not the second one. That's right. We were walking along pop, doing our coffee walk, have a nice chat. We we come into the Yeah. We come into the pop oh, to get coffee, fill up our coffee, run into Judy. Hey Judy, what's going on? She's talking to us. I don't know how it came out, but she goes, Well, Dave Dave borrowed your your swim trunks. <laughs> I don't know why that caught me funny. I think you asked what we had done last night or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, we were swimming with the kids and then Dave borrowed your swim trunks and i i had this like jerry seinfeld moment but i didn't know it was jerry seinfeld moment in my head but that 
of course, became legendary. To answer your question, which was my favorite moment ever, is when all you guys wore your USA swim trunks to that last G3. That was, that summed it all up to me, the whole thing. I was laughing and crying, and that was that was a moment. You know what I think is so special about the podcast, Kurt, is I know we've all listened to a lot of different podcasts and probably have dropped out of a lot of podcasts and even Facebook pages because of all the nastiness that goes on on those different podcasts and the nastiness and the, the horrible comments that people make on Facebook when someone asks a simple question and then they get horrible answers. That never happens. Yeah. That never happens on yours, and it doesn't happen on uh, the crushers, it doesn't happen on Mickey file. It just doesn't happen because mm. I think of the phenomenal, phenomenal people that are part of the group. Yeah. And, have, and the I got that com early on. I got that comment it's over amazing. and over again. And I, I didn't, I really wasn't a part of a lot of other groups. So I didn't know I, but I kept hearing that commentary all the time and I went, you know, and, and again, Glenn Kessler, we were having one of these heart to heart moments. Maybe it was on a meeting kind of like this one. And I'm, and you know, and I've used this at work too, with, in terms of building culture, you know, and I've learned to people will pair it back to you the way you are. I think the reason, you know, I didn't tolerate some things and, you know, I didn't swear on the podcast. I tried to keep it friendly, although we probably talked too much about drinking, but other than that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we party a little bit too hard, but other than that, we can't talk that much about drinking. Bree's been here for eight years, and she's we have not a, a we have a corrupt we haven't corrupt, corrupted oh. Bree. Yeah, I mean, if if Bree wants to know about the dangers of drinking, she can just listen to us, and she's like, I don't want to do that. That's right. <laughs> do All right, as we, we have say. A question from the co-host of the Mickey File podcast, Mr. Scott Daves. Where is he? Maybe or hand up. He actually needs one there... quick second because his printer's running. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you. You know, the other big moment I can remember again going it was even like the work. I, I went to Disney World on a work trip one time that I won an award, and they they brought us down to Disney World. And one of the things they did was we had dinner at the American Pavilion in the rotunda, which was really cool. We had the award ceremony there. And then unfortunately it was raining, but they still put ponchos on us and they brought us out and we had a dessert party out uh, in Epcot for, for the fireworks. And I just thought that was so cool. And of course I did those kinds of things with the conferences. So in the back of my mind, boy, if I ever get the podcast to a point where people would come as a community to an event and we were able to do a dessert party, and then when Tony Ann ever suggested that with such confidence, although I think you've said to me later, you didn't have that much confidence, Tony Ann, <laughs> that we were going to put it together. I, you remember what I said to you? I was like, people are going to pay that much. Pay. We needed 75 people, right? Right, right. At what was it? hundred bucks, $90 a person. Which think about it back on it now, but that's what those dessert parties cost anyway, right? No. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if we could have se I didn't know if we'd get seventy people there though. That was the other thing. Awesome. And, we, and then we had to pay it up front. And you know, put the money up front and then show up, you know, six months later to the dessert party. I was nervous about that, but when we were pulled that off. That was a huge, that was a huge thing for me. Well, you have to thank Mandy Malinowski for, because yes. she dealt with so. a very difficult to work with. So, right. so. So. That, that's right. Absolutely. Mandy Ray pulled that off. That was, that was huge. Well, you know, and you think about it, the success of the G threes have, have been a whole community event. There's no way it's one person. I, I don't do hardly anything. You guys all do all the work. It's been amazing the the amount of enthusiasm and planning that you guys put in to make it fun. Did Scott have a question or is he working on his printer? No, my printer's done now. 
Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to make coffee mugs. So I <laughs> print the sample pieces. <laughs> but it's done now. So uh, first thing I want to say real quick is I have to disagree with Judy. The reason if I leave the Geekin group is going to be because everybody is too nice. And sometimes when people ask stupid questions, you need to be able to blow up at them. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one in the crowd, Judy. <laughs> Uh, it's just sometimes, but that doesn't happen in the group. <laughs> no. That's why I'm a member of, you know, I don't think we get, a, we don't get a lot of stupid questions. We I, don't. Listen, I listen to Disney crush podcast. They read a lot of dumb questions from other groups. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be called out on the crush for their question. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Kurt, I'm going to have to like leave soon. Cause I have to work early. So I just wanted yeah. to jump in and uh, say thank you for all the support you've given us. And uh, for the, like everybody else, for the community you built, we would have never done the Star Cruiser if it wasn't for this group. Huh. You know, so it's been, uh, it's Thank been a very true. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Scott and Karen are awesome. I was listening to your podcast today. You guys were doing a great job. I was a little jealous. You guys got that PR, Disney PR trip over to the Orlando Magic. Well, how did that happen? Cool I have no idea. We have no idea. <laughs> they reached out to you? Yeah. I didn't know they had a PR department. Uh, they have at least four people. <laughs> if they were there. <laughs> you met them all. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, and they didn't like really bug us. Yeah. You no. Know, it, it was just a networking opportunity more than anything, but it was pretty cool. So, yeah, I have no idea how, how they found us or why us or we were, to my knowledge, the only actual Disney quote unquote podcast that was there. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was awesome. a lot more of, um, more like central Bloggers. travel stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was Blogger, kind of weird, Bloggers, people. weird deal. All right. Well, if you get in, don't forget your friends. Yeah. Yeah. When the media events start coming, I'll reach yeah, out. Tell them to invite us to Disney world though. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get me on Tron? That's what, what? I want to know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Thank you, Scott. I remember, you know, I was thinking when Scott was talking, some of the, the original meetups that I had that first time at Wine Bar George with Glenn Kessler, Kevin Curtis Allen, and AJ, I met for the first time at Wine Bar George. That that was an amazing meetup. I met Scott. Remember Scott sneaking up on me in line at uh, Columbia Harbor House? Those were always fun, meeting people in the parks. Did I answer all the questions? Andy, all right, Kurt. I got at least I have at least one more. You know, there's many different Disney podcasts out there. So many have different formats. What made you choose the format that that you go with? So part of it's simplicity. Part of it was again building community. I knew if I reached out to people, they would have more interest in being part of the the group. And it does. It's easy for me once you have the format. And I got good feedback from people because I would ask people. It was so easy for me. I felt like I was cheating because I didn't have to come up with a whole lot of content most of the time, but you could still get an entertaining story. You could get tips. You could get, yeah, all kinds of things that are going on in the parks all in a trip report. And it's been, what's been really fascinating is like now I've met almost every person that comes on the show too. So it's almost like a friend talking. It is a friend talking to a friend now. So it's, it's been a fantastic easy way to, to be consistent. Is there anything you would change on the format you, you do? (laughs) Yeah. The biggest, my biggest thing, if I want to do something better would be to live down there a little bit, (laughs) (laughs) like especially the winter. Mm -hmm. That's my one regret that I have a disadvantage that I can't be there when you guys are down there. Uh, yeah. I can't just go in when something new opens up, pop in for a new restaurant, that kind of stuff. That's the piece that probably annoys me the most. I wish I could do that for people. And have you covered all of your top 15 moments? Um, no, he said like three. I know. That's what I thought. <laughs> No, I, I, I we kind of interrupted you half a dozen times, so feel free to rattle off the next next twelve. No, I had a lot of them there. So I, 
I mean, the, the, the meetings in the parks have been amazing. That I really appreciate. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm picking on Bree a little bit here, but that was a fantastic example of some of the meetings I've had in parks. It's things that people have said to me. The Selena and Jackie meeting in Epcot the first time. I mean, they are the cutest sisters ever. And they snuck up, they scared the bejesus out of me and to come up from behind and they were so excited. I've had so many people that have, have been really said amazing things to me in the parks. That's always, it's always fun to do that. You guys are so generous. I, I had to mention the Podfather days. The Roadcaster Pro I'm recording on right now was a huge one that you guys sprung for me. And Glenn mentioned the painting of the dogs when Judy, you know, unveiled that at her house for me, that was pretty amazing. And of course the generosity of gift cards, getting me down to G3 last year and all the rooms I stayed in Chris's room and the sorority house and Glenn's <laughs> Riviera room and all that stuff that all those is really fantastic. That the time Glenn's wife called, called me before Christmas and wanted to give Glenn that one day. It was just one night. What was going on? There was something opening up that he wanted to see. I don't know if it was Flight of Passage. Rise of the Resistance. Rise. 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 Yeah, it was rise, rise, of the, rise of the Resistance. Yeah, it was Rise of the Resistance. And, and you gave him your magic band because he didn't couldn't get in, remember? <laughs> That's right. You thought you were going to get kicked out of the parks? <laughs> yeah, did we not? We couldn't get in? We Something went wrong. You got, you got shut down. in somehow, but he couldn't get in. So you gave him. I think him it was shut down. Him. Yeah. And then we got a return or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, we got. He ended up going twice. He ended up going later. Yeah. He was such an energy. Like Judy says, "Don't kill Kurt." We got she's, <laughs> to Glenn because he was running me ragged. But no, he, you know, was, Judy does get very concerned about you. She brought that up about <laughs> a half a dozen times during G three. There was a couple mornings when she and I rode the bus together. From French Quarter, and she she very much expressed her concern. <laughs> the big question is, who has met more geeks first, you or Judy? Ah, uh, that's a great that's a good question. <laughs> it might be a tie. I don't know. It's pretty close. She's got an advantage with the scooter, though. I do. She'll send me off in another direction. She'll know someone's around in the area, and she'll <laughs> shoot off with that scooter and meet up with people. The uh, the Patreon surprise. I was sitting here at my computer and I had started the, I started the Patreon site probably a couple of years and I didn't, I promoted it a little bit at first. Matter of fact, some people had said to me, it wasn't even, don't even bother if you don't have that big of an audience. So I, I kind of just I'm like, who's going to, who's going to donate. And I'm sitting here at the computer early in the morning doing my editing and I get an email. You get an email when someone joins the Patreon and I got one and then I got another one and then I got another one. <laughs> like what the hell is going on? And I, I really thought I got hacked because I have been hacked a few times between websites and other things. And it just come, kept coming on. Did I, and I think I messaged, did I message you, Judy, or call you? Like, I think so. You think you called me. What the hell is going on, Judy? Why am I getting, is something up? Is this real? I, I know nothing. Yeah, she, <laughs> she played total dumb. And then about an hour goes by, and I think Glenn finally gave in. And he, I think he called me and told me what was going on. So that was, that was pretty amazing. I think I got them all. Andy, that I, I had, did you guys have any that I missed? Okay. <laughs> and do any other geeks? I, you know, obviously I can't see all the raised hands. I've been scolded out already by Samantha. So does anybody else have any oh, questions? Oh, Bree's got a question. She got her hands, her hands up. And David does too. Go ahead, Bree. Uh, Sorry, um, I do have a question, but first I wanted to say that the drinking talk is not that bad. I'm just preparing for the future. I'm going to know <laughs> exactly what's good at Disney and what's not. So that's, I do that's the perfect, that's the perfect attitude. Good answer, yeah. Bree. Yeah, yep. thanks. And yeah. Also, She's dying for a frozen <laughs> lime margarita, I'm sure. I, I well. mean, I have to see what all of this hype is about. I mean, <laughs> But um, I just wanted to tell, um, I guess all of you guys, because a lot of you, I've listened to most of your voices. Um, 
and of course others that aren't here right now um, that I do feel like I know personally a little bit. Um, I just wanted to say thank you all. Um, thank you for being sort of a constant in my life in a sense. I think I've always, no matter what's going on, no matter how I feel, um, no matter what's stressing me out in my life, I can always, um, rely on this podcast and rely on all of these amazing people and rely on that amazing, um, intro that you have that I can say every single word to, um, I just know when I hear that, that I'm instantly going to be cheered up. Everything's going to be okay because, you know, there's always something that's constant and stable in my life. So I just think the community that you've built and just the loving, I don't know, it just, everyone on your podcast, I think makes me feel really safe and really at home. And so it, I just, it, I love it. And I sort of wish I could do more to sort of be involved, but <laughs> I, I'm not exactly <laughs> financially independent enough to go to Disney whenever I want. <laughs> um, but Someday I just, I will. love you guys. I love all of you. So we Seriously. are all waiting. Uh, for, we are all waiting for your first intro. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a good one. Daniel. Love it. Start. Yeah. You got to send in an intro. Some of us in our forties still aren't financially able to go to Disney <laughs> world. As much as we want to. So just to let yeah. you know. <laughs> Bree, I have to ask you a question. Are your parents uh, Disney fans too, or is it just you? Yeah, um, my parents both love Geekin as well. They like know this. I I told them I was like I'm gonna go on this um, Zoom tonight, and they were super excited. They both love Geekin and stuff. They've been fans for forever as well. Um, but yeah, just it's so amazing to actually be involved and stuff <laughs> well you're the superstar for tonight brie mm -hmm. i'm gonna remember she that i'm gonna remember those comments when i'm lonely here in the studio editing yeah but brie actually so one of the episodes i want to do and maybe you could contribute are you really geeky when it comes to disney stuff I mean, I don't know if I'd be a fan of this podcast if I wasn't. All right. I didn't. I, I knew that was a dumb question. But <laughs> actually, Nancy's is Nancy here? Where's Nancy? Yeah. So Nancy's I've been, here. I've been thinking I'm of a, a show put together with Nancy. Now I got you. And I was thinking also um, Susan Bankston's daughter, Anne Marie, who's really geeky. But you guys, I'm not that geeky. So I need you guys to come up with the questions and the topics of something we could talk about. It can be about the parks or Disney or whatever. The geek in Jeopardy, and they could be the contestants. Yeah, something like that. But I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll have I to tried. come up with how to do it. But I want to do a show like that, Bree. I would love for you to come on. If if you're brave enough to come and face this crowd on the 500th episode, you can do an, a, an episode, right? Yeah, I definitely think so. I love Jeopardy, and I love Disney, so I think that's perfect. That might be, all right. <laughs> Wow, maybe I'll have Wendy help me with that. I have the board still in my basement. I got to <laughs> dig it out. <laughs> <sighs> this time, awesome. Samantha and I, when we made the board, we made one so that we just had to, the board was all set. We just had to add the questions. So we're literally ready uh, to go whenever you are. I'm so glad you came in and like expressed that too, Bree, because you know over the years, that was one of the things that fascinated me about doing a Disney World podcast. So even Kevin will tell you one of the things that bonded us when he broke his leg, you know, I reached out to him and the community reached out to him. You probably, she's, she's shaking her head. She even knows what I'm talking about. And, you know, he's expressed, you know, how, how much this community meant to him during that time when he was going through a rough time. I, one of the episodes I did, episode 200, I had someone send in a, an audio of a, a time where she was in the hospital and she was, ha I would have conversations with her. She was an American in, in, in France and Beth, Beth Jacobs, she wouldn't mind. She, she said this on the podcast, but she was going through a rough time and she talked to me about how, and we used to chat all the time and she would say just how much this podcast, and that blew me away. I mean, I had no idea doing a Disney podcast could have that kind of impact on people. And, you know, Nancy's here. She remembers yeah. what she said to me when on the last uh, G3, 
she walked up to this was right after the shorts incident so i just had this like emotional like laughing crying <laughs> glenn ripped off his pants and his shorts were under there by the way that's how me and my husband got introduced to the geeks so that that was quite the first yeah. impression <laughs> that made an impression on you right <laughs> I think that's when my husband realized that he could he he could fit in with these people. Then right after that moment, Nancy came up to me and and did an emotional like thank you, just because of the pandemic too. It was a lot of a lot of that stuff that we went through through the pandemic. How much the podcast meant to her, Tony Ann, her experience. You know, when she's related to you guys of meeting the group and stuff, and and some of those emotions. So, I that those you know if you're to ask me. Andy, again, those those are the most precious things for me. And, and you guys, the way you guys take care of each other, this thing that's going on right now with Glenn, thank you so much for, I, mean, I knew, I was a little anxious reaching out to Glenn. It's kind of awkward during that kind of time. But, you know, I said, you know, these guys are going to want to do something for you. They, they love you to death. So, um, and it's always been awkward for me to ask people to chip in money and stuff, but you guys have always been, I, mean, I try not to do it all the time, but. Did Dave have a question? Or is he still there? There he is. Yeah. I'm, yeah. How, oh, okay, Kirk. Besides all the super geeks that you've interviewed over the years, all the amazing geeks, is there anybody that you'd like to interview that you, it could be in the Disney universe or not? Anybody? Who's the one person that you'd like to sit down and talk to and have an interview with? I always answer that with Walt. I want Walt Disney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If if, you, if it was anybody, that would definitely be the person. He's yeah. probably the most humble, amazing people person. I miss that whole attitude that that Walt brought. But you know, Dave, you know what's interesting is that you would think, you know, I've I've talked to, you know, I love talking to Len Testa. Uh, he was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I was think, you know, I was really nervous when the unofficial guide. I reached out to. Did I reach out to them? I think I did, and they said yes. And I interviewed Bob Selinger the first time. Early on, I was really nervous, and and he was, you know, the unofficial guide author. And when we got off that call, he says he said to me, "You know what? That was one of the most amazing. You did such a fantastic job." And he was really from his heart said that to me. I was really prepared for it, and they had given me some of the questions too. And and I wanted him to, I wanted him to say what he wanted to say because they get interviewed by a lot of different people, and so that was good. But you know, and I've had a lot. Of, like book authors reach out to me and I've done some of those, but to be honest with you, I really don't care about the famous people. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I have no interest in the, I like the down to earth, regular people. I love the super geeks are what you guys are. What matters to me? I really don't care about the famous people. I was just looking, you guys are all missing. Um, Lou, Lou, what's his face? Mangello. Lou Mangello. Mangello. You're missing his live <laughs> Facebook right now, by the way. So what's he doing? Maybe, maybe, you know what, if I were, maybe I would say Lou, I like, I would like to get, I wish I knew Lou Mangello better. Maybe if anybody, cause he's a podcaster, but yeah. next time I bump into him at Wawa, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, give him your card. You? I did meet no, him I, once. Well, I bumped into him at Wawa once and I was dumb. I was just, I yeah. couldn't say anything. I, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm just as bad when, when I'm uh, not me, Tony. Ann. I, I ran up right up to him. I said, can I get a hug? Oh. And he gave us a big, gave me a big hug, and we talked to him for. So you know, if, if Samantha was with it. you, she'd be really afraid that somebody would embarrass her, embarrass her, and then you know ruin that chance to become best friends with said and blogger I'm, or blogger <laughs> or podcaster. I fear. <laughs> and you guys have to know with you. friends a little too well, and I was right. You were. I was. I was always. I'm still interested in the trips. The guy, I always get excited to talk to you guys about your trips. I'm really not that interested in talking to authors about what, what, whatever the hell they're writing about. To be honest with you, it doesn't interest me that much. I mean, the unofficial guide, yes, because I've always liked that book. But anything else, I, I, I kind of just don't get back to them. Well, it it, it shows because you call everybody that you uh, interviewed super geeks, which I think is amazing too. So, you know, they, they become part of the family just by, in, you know. I think that's a big, that was uh, the philosophy too. You were talking about Cliff. And one of the things I think I learned from him was, and I, and I played this with Glenn Kessler from the very beginning, was when you're podcasting, you don't know if anyone's going to listen. You don't know if you're going to get anyone to respond to a Facebook group or 
or will email you. And you think about it, it's actually a very low percentage of the group. The, so you guys are very special because I've had over between two and 3,000 people listening to an episode. And here we are with 22 of you on the 500th episode. And, you know, and you look at the numbers of people that are engaged. You know, I probably got about a couple hundred that, you know, sometimes we'll post something in the Facebook group and you could see 100 to 200 people mess, you know, engaged in some way. So just by the numbers, you guys are really special in, in that you do get involved and get engaged. So that's why I cry when I talk to you guys in big meetings. <laughs> I think that's kind of why the group back to the original question before about why the group doesn't get why there's no nastiness in the group. I think it's because we all take some ownership of it by being yeah. super geeks because we're not going to put up with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I can remember th- something nasty happening. You know how quick I hear about that? Like that. Somebody will message me and say, hey, did you see, you know, of course, Judy's always watching it or Tony Ann or somebody, somebody's watching that group and I'll hear about it within minutes of if something's going sour. Travis, you haven't said anything. You got a question? Uh, not, not a question. Um, I just have to get going, but I just wanted to take the time to to congratulate you on um such an amazing podcast and community that you made and um, for all the great times that we've all had and everything. And so I just wanted to congratulate you on that and many, many years of more, more happy memories and happy uh, times. So keep doing it. We appreciate you for sure. And um, everything that you do. So I just wanted to say that quickly before I had to get off here and, Many, many things for everything. Uh, obviously, I think the small world thing was something I'll probably always remember that we all came together as a community to to support a great cause. And, and you supported that so much and, and helped raise awareness with it and promoted it. And just with many other uh, great podcasts, friends that we have on here for sure. So that that probably, probably is my top one um, of a couple that I just want to kind of mention real quick. Thanks, Travis. It was a great day. It was a fun day. And I was glad, glad it was such a huge success. And it was only a huge success because of the great community that we have here and all the people that took the time to donate and to make shirts and make um, posts and just everything yeah. uh, that went with that. So all I did was just get on a ride for 20 times. So, well, it's you know, all that's because all of I people did. like you that you think about the success. Uh-huh. I mean, we got so many, you know, you do the Ohio meetups, you know, Wendy does the meetups. There's so many people that are doing so many things. It's, it's, it's blows my mind. It's you guys are amazing. Thank you, Travis. Uh, no, okay. no problem, man. But Andy, I'm raising to, my hand. Wendy, I just <laughs> want to see you raise your hand. And you may have okay. <laughs> So, I know you talked a little bit about the first G3 and that was really my first experience. I mean, I did meet up, I did have one meetup before that, but for those who weren't there, it was like this amazing experience where we were all on this messenger and the messenger would start going off at literally like (laughs) 5am because that's when um, galaxy's edge was open at 6am (laughs) <laughs> and everyone was meeting there. And I can remember it's my first time going, staying by myself alone overnight in a hotel, meeting these crazy people. And I'm literally meeting them at 545 in the morning at Hollywood Studios when it was dark out. I didn't know anyone. And all of a sudden, I, I remember I ran into Stacy Zito Brown. I think I ran into Selena. And we're riding like Slinky Dog in the dark. <laughs> and I just I remember like this is such a crazy thing. But it was so you just felt like you knew these people. And I think some of the people I see on here tonight, like Nick, when he first came to meet us at, um, right. at Trader Sam's all of a sudden he was like, these are my people. And, <laughs> and as the newer people who are coming and Nancy, when we first met her and she had coffee and Trey, when, Oh my goodness, I can't even discuss <laughs> poor <laughs> Trey when he first came <laughs> and had our experience with us. Um, it's just when, everyone that you just meet, you just have this experience. You just feel like, you know, these people and yeah, know you're it. comfortable and it's just a great community. And Kurt, you should be very 
proud mm-hmm. that you formed all that because thinking back yeah. on all the, you know, the friendships that were made, yeah. it's just unbelievable. It, it again, I was having deja vu of my conference experience of the people, those, that same people that had such a great affection for each other, but you're right. You, you just keep running into people. And actually we've got Noreen and, um, Nick here together. Noreen, would you like to apologize to Nick for his introduction into the geeking community? Do you know what you did? I think I asked him if he was left-handed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he did that to a couple of people, though. Chris, no, I think Chris has the I, same story. Chris, Chris has the best one. Nick, for his introduction to this group, because I really screwed him on his bingo card accidentally. <laughs> Nick, how did you survive that first introduction? Well, I think, what was it? The summer? It was a summer birthday or like... A birthday in August or something. The, the a birthday the same month as you and yes, I. Yes, yeah. Someone put the birthday. That I'm one of what year you were born instead. Two yeah. people. Noreen asked me the same thing. And so I should really be signing everyone's vegetarian spot, and I forgot. And Nick and I have the same birthday month, right. and so I signed his August card, and I was like, "Okay, I'm so sorry. I really messed this up for you. You need to oh. find Bubba Mac because he's your only chance <laughs> of getting." Oh, well, Nick. Should I tell these guys to tone it down a notch before you guys get acclimated to the group or what? No, no. <laughs> How come like you run away? Said, like Wendy said, the second I walked up, you guys, like, I knew, I, I mean, we love Disney so much and our friends, like, they don't get it. They're Some yeah. of them are starting to get it because we bring them down. But, you know, you guys obviously understand and are fans of it as well. So, like, being around you and, and being able to, like, openly talk about what our yep. favorite things are, like try new things together. It's, it's just a fun community. After a few drinks, Nick together. gets on the phone with Carlin. I think Carlin, Carlin had a crappy day that day too. I remember, she right? Did. She, did. She, she was ready to meet up with us. You were having oh, just yeah. a, a bad day at work and Nick's going, you got to meet all these crazy people. We're going out to dinner <laughs> to space 220. And then we did yeah. the night we did Yeehaw Bob and we were dancing. Remember? <laughs> no, that was a different night. I was like, I think <laughs> <it was> nice <laughs> later. <laughs> And oh, wait, wait. the one person that needs to get an apology is Trey. Trey needs <laughs> you do a Trey? super big apology. Oh, you sent him to the wrong room at Bay Lake. I did accidentally <laughs> haze a number of people on this call. <laughs> Dick, myself, and Trey, but I think Trey got the worst of it. Trey Oddly got enough, the worst of it. He yeah. went to the wrong the room. Round. Yeah. She basically oh, sent me to sense. the garden wing of the contemporary. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I, I, it's not even part of the contemporary, I don't think. So I he, forget. I think he really needs an apology. And then he got to the room and we were drinking champagne. champagne and Trey started to have champagne. I look at him and I said, do you mm-hmm. like champagne? He goes, no, but I was drinking this because that's what there's here. I'm like, that's okay. We have other champagne for you. <laughs> and I pulled out champagne from the gift shop. So he doesn't get the good champagne. champagne. That, and that champagne <laughs> literally <laughs> tasted like a car air freshener. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Who took a video of me tasting it? I have a video. I have that video. Right. So, video. so you like taste it. And I took I a video of me tasting it. Nice blackmail video. First video. <laughs> I took a video and I'm like trying hard not to spit all the champagne out. <laughs> and then. So, was it a couple days later when you met Madison for the first time? She got to drink coffee out of a dirty paper cup that had champagne in it the night before. <laughs> See, I don't even know half this stuff. Hi there, yeah. Yes. You want to talk to <laughs> about meeting people you don't know at 6 a.m. in the park. I had Madison, who I've never met before, show up on our doorstep at 445 in the morning. And I woke up and Rebecca was there and I said, Madison's going to come get ready here. And she's like, okay. And just stuff <laughs> pops up and we're ready to go and greet her. But we had no cups. This was before we got our owner's locker. We had no cups. We only had the styrofoam cups we had used for champagne the night before. So we offered her coffee in leaky styrofoam cups. Rebecca's, <laughs> was like, oh, Rebecca's just went like all over her. <laughs> and that's when... was... Where are you saying, Andy? And then we actually saying... almost killed her in a Murphy bed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I wanted it to fall. Okay. I was looking for that payout. And I <laughs> that cat, like we- you know, now that I've had my toddler bed request, my quest, I've, I've been secretly hoping for that. And it like one time Rebecca's like, Andy, I kind of hope it falls because then, you know, I might get more DVC points. 
Um, <laughs> but we yeah, had Kurt, our opportunity, and Samantha saved us. Yeah. yeah. What was Andy's first? All Andy right. had the same. My first, my thing first as was Nick. Very similar to Nick. Doreen came up to me, hugged me, and said, "Whispers in my ear." What what year were you born? And then somebody's <laughs> like, "No, Noreen, it's what month?" <laughs> and then, you know, I was a little late to the party, so I had to get caught up. And you know, I think I was on my second drink in a half hour. And also, I noticed Noreen's a little taller than me. I think Deirdre's a little taller than me. And then everybody starts giggling, and Samantha's like, "Ha we put you in the shrinking chair." <laughs> and then I found out they did the same thing to Nick Ayub, and I'm like, "Okay, I don't feel as bad." But that was Nick and I's you both introduction got to the group in your first introduction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. But yes. you know, we put that past us, and you know, we're we're great friends now. Well, All Samantha, because of this wonderful remember group. this is the first thing Samantha ever gave me. I love New York. Aww. Uh, uh-huh. And she was afraid of me. I have I have two regrets in the time that I've been involved with this podcast. One is calling you from Three Caballeros, <laughs> and the second one is bringing friends to that first G three. That was a big mistake. When the, you that was the first, that was a bigger mistake than the second one. Yeah, when that Did messenger was going me? off at five a.m. and everybody was, and I hadn't even met anybody yet, and everybody was meeting up in Galaxy's Edge. And I had these three friends who I was dragged out of bed to go yeah. somewhere and they were complaining about it. Yeah. I was like, I have made a a big mistake. And Did you I make friends know. though at the first G3? Well, I knew already I had met Jackie and Selena and uh Jen Wynn and Michelle Her on a previous trip. Right. Oh, okay. But, and that was it. That's the only four people I had ever met before. So I brought friends so I didn't want to feel like I was you know, a little lost puppy tagging on to them all the time. But that was a mistake. I'll never do that again. Well, I guess I do do that. Like, I wrote Rebecca in and now, yeah. now I own Everybody it. else? <laughs> like, dear, dear Watts can no longer take a solo trip to Disney because of you? Sure. Why do you regret the five? What, what time was five o'clock? What was that call? You were all going, the messenger was going off at 5 a.m. to meet up in Galaxy's Edge. And no, I had, no, no, no. I'm talking about the call you did to call. me from the Cal. Cal- we, we, I we called you, you from Three Caballeros. Happy yeah. Us all together. And then yeah. next thing I know, you're hysterically crying. And I was like, well, I've made a big mistake. Yeah. I really are, misjudged the situation. Those were happy tears. I know. <laughs> oh, I miss you guys. It's fun. What's up for the future? 500 more? Good question, Daniel. <laughs> what is up for the future? Just more of the same. When are you going to become a snowbird, Kurt? You've yeah. been talking about that. I'm, I have a little taste of it. I have to tell you, it's really nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was 80 today, right, Tony? And it was, it's been gorgeous weather. No humidity. That is the big dream. I, you know, Tony Ann was, it was cool one night after the last G3, we were up on the, what is that place oh, called? Dahlia Lounge. Dahlia the Dahlia Lounge. Lounge. The, we were on top of it. And I was, it was funny because it was, it was in my head because it was another, the last G3, I, obviously we've talked in a lot about it and it was amazing. And there was a lot, there was a lot more people. And I think Tony Ann, you come from behind me and said, what are we going to do if this gets bigger? Because I was thinking the same thing, and I, I know I knew what she. I think I know what you meant by that was because we have such a a good, like we've all talked about, we have such good relationships, and sometimes when things get bigger, they some bad things can happen. I guess is what we're thinking. But you know, I, I've thought about it. I think again, the culture. I mean, yes, things bad things can still happen, but. I think the good friends still stick around. I don't, there's, there's very little that, that could break that piece up. So I think the culture, it's interesting. It keeps, it keeps building on itself. No matter, I think how many people, I don't know, you know, I'm starting to wonder, I don't know what Disney's up to. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to afford to go to Disney world. So I don't know how much bigger it's going to get. <laughs> you know, people talk about what, what, what does success mean for a podcast? I mean, how could it get any better? It, it, I, I, I can't really, I can't explain how it could, could, could be any better. The relationships is really what's so, 
special about this group. And I mean, unless I get more Breeze come on and say sweet things like that. Oh, <laughs> she was adorable. Right. She's absolutely that adorable. Never gets old. That never gets old. <laughs> I, see, I see we scared her away. I texted Andy and I said, That's am I thing. old enough to be this girl's Disney mom? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, as a matter of fact, you are. <laughs> Seven, yes. you? <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you so you guys know, for all coming out. You know what I heard when Bree was saying that? Like I heard her talking about how steady this show has been. More mm-hmm. than about and you know, there's Good been point. podcasts that have come and gone and nine years, you know, that's that's amazing. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't know what else. I go to work every day. I pretty much don't miss a day of work. So it's kind of like that. It's not, it's so ingrained in my, uh, Joe Taylor, who I've started doing another podcast with, he he makes fun of me because I keep talking about my Disney podcast. (laughs) It just keeps coming up because it's just ingrained in my life. You guys are all a part of my life. And I, like, like Samantha said, Samantha and I had no social life before this podcast. <laughs> we share that in common. Like we're regular in-person friends are like, are you for this time? Like, no, I got to record a podcast. No, I got a Zoom call. No, yeah. I got a person. No, I'm going on a Disney trip for two weeks with a bunch of friends you people don't know. Oh, really? I mean, I had three kids. You know, I couldn't, I could never have done it. I always appreciate people that try to do something like this with three kids or two kids and work full time and all that. It's, 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 it is difficult to keep it going, but I, <laughs> yeah, it, I had the time and you guys have just been, like I said, like it became the family because you guys became my family, part extended family. Well, that's one of the things that I wanted to add to Kurt is so like, I mean, you've heard my story and stuff. And one of the things is ever since I was very little, I've been very obsessed with Disney world and my family just doesn't get it. I literally, my dad basically stopped my husband after he proposed to me saying, you know where she wants a honeymoon, right? And he's like, yeah, Disney world. And he goes, yeah, you're going to want us to pay for the wedding. That's going to be, that's going to break your bank. Like that was, that's my father's, reaction to disney world was why why do i want to pay this much money to go to a theme park yeah we hear that theme a lot too nancy that's yeah it's you know again getting back to why people bond together part of that i i know that and you guys know that when you talk to people outside of our circle you get the negative yeah mm, but whatever. like one of the things that i i wanted to get to with my my meandering story because i i guess i kevin curse allen has rubbed off on me um but anyhow, is the thing that I love about this is there are so many podcasts out there and so many Disney podcasts where you sit and you listen to it and you either feel like you're listening to a expert or historian talk about Disney or a bunch of experts give you their travel advice or, oh, I've been to Disney every year. This is what I like and I don't like. And this one is more like I'm sitting with my my pod father and my aunts and cousins and distant relatives. And it's like, I have that family who loves Disney as much as I do and who like encourages me as like, I, when I was like answering trivia and stuff at, at all, at Albany G3, I'm so used to when I spat out random useless Disney information <laughs> that my mom opened her eyes. And instead I got told I was a superwoman for doing that while wrangling a toddler. And I'm like, <laughs> Wow, this is a power. <laughs> well, save some of that superpower to because I do want to do that show with you. Yeah, of course. I, I hey, if you you're giving me an outlet to rant about Disney, I'm I love all that for feedback. It. That that's that's a different twist on what I've heard before, but I, I appreciate that. That's something that I hope when you listen to the show, and that's what I was noticing. Like. When when I bring people on, it's I know these I know these people. I've met them in person. I've had them on before. We have relationship, so we're not. It's it's real. The the only the only danger is I occasionally have fallen asleep to the podcast and I have dreams that I'm actually sitting at the table eating with you guys, and then I wake up super hungry. 
And like, oh, I mean, none of these people are nearby. Great. Well, you got to re, you got to redo the, you got to look at the warning label, Nancy. Yeah. When don't, you listen. Don't, don't listen to this while sleeping with a toddler. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't listen to this. If you're hungry, don't, don't listen go shopping. To don't go grocery yeah. shopping. <laughs> Don't don't listen to this if your bank account is low. You don't need to book another Disney trip at the moment. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. <laughs> I I actually I, I've had so many crazy dreams of like I, I I'm listening to the podcast and then I literally am like I had one where I'm literally sitting next to Kurt and I think it was like Chris and Auntie Judy. I don't even know if they were all on the podcast episode. Like I don't know. It was just like us sitting and it was at a restaurant I know doesn't exist in Disney world. <laughs> and it was, it was like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> well, maybe we'll quit on that. Oh, no, Deidre's got uh, a question. I, I have, this might be the last question. Kurt, who is your favorite listener and why is it Sam? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're just bitter because you were my favorite listener. I know I'm for- very bitter. <laughs> You were my favorite listener for a very short period of time, right, Deirdre? Yeah, it was a very, very short, short period of time. Oh, so Deirdre, there's a lot. Many of us who never drink a beer. <laughs> Crack the top five, so you're you're better and better standing than most of us. <laughs> I mean, Deirdre, you're 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 the every time you are in the parks is there suddenly is tons of geeks in the oh, parks. That's true. So. I I am the influencer. You're the influence. that's you right. your new job, better, your right? new unofficial job. Well, well yeah. yeah. When Deirdre and I, we we had we had some good times early on when we first met, and yeah. and I, I said to I'll never forget. I said, Deirdre, you're gonna make lots of friends through this pod. Something like that. Was that how and I said? said it? You said maybe maybe we can find you some friends because I was there by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I I have friends. I you know. That's right. <laughs> You thought you had more friends. Now you have more friends. Now I have lots more. I don't remember who I who I asked, but my first G three, I was like, "Is that Kurt's wife?" (laughs) 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 That was that that was true. I knew. I I was thinking that. I said to someone recently, someone thought Deidre was my wife. Yeah, I'm gonna tell Margie that that's all. I think it was you and I when we recorded already, on Sunday. I already told her. We've yeah. already laughed about it. I've already it told time. her. I've already told it her. It could be worse. It could be my husband who, as he was meeting Kurt and talking to Kurt, turns to Kurt and goes, "So are you on the podcast?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's pretty good too. Yeah. <laughs> oh and then gosh. he literally he 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 was like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that to the host of the podcast." <laughs> uh. Now that was fun. Deidre mm-hmm. messages me. I was sitting at, eat, I was eating at the Grand Floridian with Margita and Judy and Ken. And Deidre's got like, I got a free ADR for, it was over at the, was it the French? No, Italian at the, place. The Italian restaurant in Epcot. In Epcot. And I looked, at, I looked at Margita and Judy. I said, I, we were all going in different directions anyway that day. I was like, should I go meet this listener for lunch? Judy's like, yeah, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That was like the first time I met you, wasn't it, Deidre? Well, we'd met. No, we'd met earlier. We we'd met, we meet for the first time at Hollywood Studios. Yeah. We walked around Epcot together, and then we met at the the lounge in the yacht club. That was a good. That was another good meetup too. That was With the Brainerds, Nick and Maglio, the Brainerds, Nick and Barbie, and, yeah. yeah. And Lisa, and Lisa, Lisa and, Ray. and um, Ray, yeah. yeah, that was a great. Except, but it was that same trip, right? A couple days later. All right. Well, enough celebrating for one episode. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you. Well, thank Thanks, you, Kurt. Kurt. Thanks for everything Thanks, you Kurt. do and all the work that you put into the podcast and keeping this family together. Yeah. Yeah. You guys We're make it easy. We're a lot to handle, so it's pretty impressive that you can manage. <laughs> I'm not I'm managing anything. Maybe someday, someday you'll get into the solo ladies. I'll put in a good word. <laughs> I don't know. No, no. I don't want to know what's going on in the solo ladies. <laughs> can, can I end on one more sentimental note? Okay. Like you know, you're doing something great, Kurt. When my 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 little guy, who he's he's autistic and he's nonverbal, as some people may know. But one of the few things that he said clearly was, I go Mickey house with my friends. Uh, and I'm like, 
who are your friends? And he just like smiled at me and he wears your sh- the shirt every day. So like you're, you're doing something. You're doing I, something great, Kurt. That's a good note to end on. Thanks. It is. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah. Wow. Thanks guys. Congratulations. Good night, everyone. Congratulations. 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 Yeah. Congratulations. 500. Norma wanted to say she, you still have the best voice in podcasts. <laughs> I don't know. Karen's got a pretty good one. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. I was listening to Karen's this morning, walking on my walk. I think she does that on purpose. <laughs> I mean, Veronica's pretty good when she posts yes. on the uh, no, got a good one. I like it. No, 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 no. no, no. And Karen started doing audiobooks, they would be billionaires. Yeah. No, it, yeah. It, it's all Karen. What I kind listen of, to Karen. What kind of audio books? It's my favorite yeah. thing. They can read me the phone That's book. That's exactly right. I, <laughs> I would listen. Yeah, Chris, do not encourage this. That's please. 1 900 numbers right there. That's <laughs> Harlequin Romances? Uh, I don't Veronica and Karen, family, please, on a Patreon episode podcast. for either one of yours, please pick some random. <laughs> you can yeah, pick some random story out of the newspaper. I, we want to hear it. We demand your listeners demand. No, it, that would be it's great. It's just very easy to turn to turn the voice on and off. It's the podcast <laughs> voice, right? <laughs> it is a podcast. It is, well, no, it, it, it is. Angela, Angela so. I'll see you on the airport. Oh, <clears> yes, <throat> you will. <laughs> We're flying down like, together to TDC. Hey, I want, you know what? Oh. I'm going to shut the, I can turn the recording off. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Well, you know, I had mixed thoughts about recording episode 500 when Andy Hoffman, he said his idea was for me to list out some of my favorite memories from 500 episodes of doing the podcast. I really didn't want to talk about myself for a whole episode. I I really want to bring information and content that's going to be interesting for the listeners. I hope you hope some of you had had some fun listening back to that. I know I've ended up having a lot of fun. I'm so glad so many came on the Zoom call and asked me questions. It's always much more fun to do a podcast when you're in, interacting with others and answering questions. That's why I always love the format of trip reports because I love hearing about your adventures down in Disney World makes doing the podcast really easy and fun for me. Well, I thought this recording was going to be the celebration of 500 episodes of the podcast, but once again, the super geeks, they punked me and they punked me, but good (laughs) Thursday night this past week, I was planning on recording with some geeks who went on the geek in Disney cruise, but about 80 super geeks surprised me with a 47-minute video celebration for all of us to enjoy, filled with stories and thank yous. It's out there in the Disney Crush YouTube feed. It was kind of funny when people kept on coming into the Zoom call lobby, and I finally did figure something was up. I think I counted 36 on that call to watch the video that Tony Anzarcone had collected and edited for, for me since, working on it since December of last year. Amazing job, Tony Ann did. Thank you so much. I recorded a live video this morning onto the the Facebook group. So go, if you'd like to hear me thank every single person who is on that video, check out the live video on Facebook group. But for those of you who aren't on Facebook, some of my favorite parts of this video were just the overall theme. I'm sure Tony Ann came up with this, where the listener would say, hey, Kurt, this is so-and-so, and and I'm your favorite listener. (laughs) The interwoven iconic pictures of the first time meetings with all all the people who were on the videos and fun times we had in the parks and geek meets. Just perfect music, especially like that final tune with little help from my friends, the Joe Cocker version of the famous Beatles song. The music in the background was just so perfect, all about friends. The collage at the end of all 80 people around me in the mid- with me in the middle, it's just mind-blowing. And there are little videos talking. That's the picture I posted for this episode on my website and in Facebook. Glenn Kessler's funny intro and all his little interwoven parts. And of course, his signature speech as only he can deliver near the end of the video. He's got such emotional memories. I like how Tony Ann commented later in our Facebook group how she enjoyed me waving and interacting with each person who shared their stories. 
I'm so connected to these people. They're part of my life. And then it was all capped off with my favorite listener, Samantha, defiantly and emphatically reminding everyone that she's my favorite (laughs) and she won't graciously give up her reign. You know, the fact that the geeks get my sarcastic humor on that little inside joke really cracked me up. And I had a few tears flowing on both sides of my eyes during that, laughing and crying through that whole video. Thank you so much. And I was emotionally and physically drained after that two and a half hour call. And it felt like I had just finished four days with you guys at the first G3. Just Friday night, I crashed. But thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, guys. You guys make it easy to produce a podcast for just about nine years, 500 episodes. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon in the parks. Definitely say hi to me when you see me in the parks. Going to be down there. Let's talk about that. What's coming up? Got a big announcement. This is all being put together right now as I speak. But do you remember the UK players in Epcot who used to do a show like the Monty Python Search for the Holy Grail? Grail, Grail, Grail. (laughs) Remember that? (laughs) I love that show. Missed that one. The live players in the UK pavilion. Well, Lindsay and I are going to Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, on May 13th to see the Broadway production of Spamalot at the Kennedy Center with one of Lindsay's friends, Sam. Sam is someone that Lindsay met at the Disney College program. One of the Broadway actors who just finished up a run doing Beetlejuice is starring in Spamalot. I think it's only playing there for a couple of weeks in Washington. But we're going to be there May 13th for the weekend. And I messaged Glenn Kessler just yesterday. Lindsay and I were at another show seeing cats at the Palace Theater in Waterbury, Connecticut. And I was messaging Glenn, letting him know that we're going to be down in Washington May 13th. And we started the ball rolling. It's going to be a geek meet. I think Glenn's going to be there for sure. And I see a couple of others. I posted it, this announcement in the Facebook group. So if you're going to be in or can be in Washington, D.C., May 13th. We'll hang out at some of the, I've always wanted to do the museums. I've been to Washington a couple times, but they were always with groups of kids. One was for the band. I mean, We played July 4th parade down there. And one time I was on a church work camp driving through. I only got a short amount of time in Washington, D.C. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm excited. I've been wanting to see Spam a lot for the longest time. I think there's still some tickets available for Spamalot. So if you want to do see the show, it's an 8 p.m. show. See if you can get some tickets. But definitely during the day, we will be hanging out in Washington, checking out some of the museums and be a fun geek meet. Let me know if you can attend that. And I am going to Walt Disney World April 27th through May 2nd for the Disney Crush Podcasts World Conference. I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm getting the feeling I'm, I may not be Billy No Mates. There's a lot of folks staying in the boardwalk area, so I'm really excited to hang out with the Crushers. I got my Crusher t-shirt. Tori Hunt was just messaging me. She says, we're putting together a 5K run, too. There's going to be so many fun events. I'm looking forward to hanging out, be doing my coffee walks early in the morning. If you're down there, you want to hang out with me early in the morning. If you get up early, do my coffee walk recording. Or late at night, I'm going to be burning the candle at both ends, I'm sure, for this world conference with the crushers. Please say hi to me if you see me down in the parks, April 27th through May 2nd. And, you know, the date is set. The next Grand Geek and Gathering, September 28th through October 1st of this year. I'm seeing geeks getting excited, booking their rooms with Mom and Judy and I know we've got over 80 geeks definitely in our private Facebook group just dedicated to the G3. I hear people talking about the G3. You just heard all the stories that came from the past G3s. This will be our fourth one. We know how to have fun. We know how to welcome you into the geek and family. Don't get intimidated by us because you've been listening for a long time. We That was so cute. How cute was that with Bree <laughs> saying she's been listening since the fifth grade? I know there's other listeners of you out there that have been listening for a long time. You've not reached out, and I totally get it. I understand. I've been the same way myself. I'm an introvert. We will do everything we can, and I will make sure I will remind the leaders 
and the friends here, they're so welcoming. Just ask anyone, listen to any of the stories. We will welcome you with open arms and bring you into this geek and family so you too can make some friends and have some fun on your adventures down to Disney World because we understand you geeks. And I know you'll have fun if you come to the Grand Geek Gathering September 28th through October 1st. I saw Karen and Scott Daves. They were watching my live video from the parks. They were riding the people mover. And then they also did a intro for me. I thought I was including that intro here, but I had that recording from Bree. I just had to, to do that. I probably could use the video that Tony Ann did collected for me for intros for the next year. There's some great moments captured there too. But if you do an intro for us, I'd love to play it on the podcast. They're easy to do. You can do it by video, audio, message them to me, email them to me, kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. Tell me your name, where you're from, a fun Disney World fact or two about yourself. You go geeking on Walt Disney World, Curtis, and the whole geeking family. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Wow, I had a, a big month in February. I had like four new geeks pledge a monthly donation to the show through patreon.com. Yeah, just go out to Patreon, and that's where you'll, you can support the podcast. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone, for keeping the Patreon.com going. It means so much to me. I, I, I really do appreciate you guys. I did not do a recording this week, or release a recording. I did record with Kevin Curtis Allen. I've got one coming up from Andy Hoffman, and I'm going to be reaching out to some more people to do a review Review the geeks, the super geeks of the Geek and Podcast. I'm enjoying doing those recordings. I just, as I already told you, I was straight out doing stuff this past week with going to New York City and all the emotional highs of the geeks punking me on Thursday. Check out my new podcast with my good friend, Joe Taylor. We call it Dudes in Progress. It's a personal development show. If you're interested in that sort of thing, we're doing a 30-day challenge on minimalism right now. Talking about doing things that matter, being intentional about your life. I'm going to do a couple of shows about that. And our recent episodes are going to be looking at a couple of books. One is The One Thing. And Joe's going to be talking about essentialism. I know we're going to be recording that episode this week. Thanks for some of you that listen to Geekin. Checking out Dudes in Progress. And then Mom and Judy, they're busy booking trips for you guys and talking with you every single day, email them at travelintiers at gmail.com. Or if you, if you book your own trips, transfer that trip in the booking, give mom and Judy credit for it. doesn't cost you anything. They appreciate it. They thank you. I thank you for supporting us. Although I got to do my taxes today. It's not going to be fun. Do you like doing taxes? Oh my gosh. You guys have made it complicated for me. <laughs> I guess that's a good problem to have, right? Because we're committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacation. Reach out to me if you'd like to do a trip report. Book a trip. Come on a round table. We love talking about your plans for trips. Kurt.Stone at geekinonww.com. Guys, thanks for going on this crazy ride with me and geeking on Walt Disney World with me every week for the last 500 episodes. I appreciate you listening and geeking with me every single day. I love you, geeks. You have no idea. You enhance my life every single day. And each other. Keep taking care of each other. That is probably the thing I'm the most proud of this geek and family, the way you take care of each other. Keep dreaming. Have magical days every single day. And I hope all your dreams come true. <laughs>